The Bible says, unless the Lord builds a temple, we labor in vain. So let's take it to Him and ask His blessing on this time. Lord, the great gift You've given us of prayer. The disciples walked with You. They watched You raise the dead, heal the sick. The blind would see, the lame would walk, the deaf would hear. You'd feed thousands with so little, and yet the only thing they ever asked You to teach them was how to pray. They knew that Your private life of prayer was a result of Your public life of power. Long before the sun would arise, you'd go to a solitary place and there commune with the Father. And so we're here in your presence, and we're asking, Lord, that you'd build the temple. We're here for your glory and honor you and to bless you. We humble our hearts, and you deserve it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, what kind of a conference has Patrick Mahomes leading worship? I mean, that's pretty epic. Have a seat if you would. Uh, that's actually Micah Stevens. He's my son-in-law, and I'm very proud of him. <laughs> he's a father of five kids. Yeah, and he's still living. <laughs> he's precious. Well, uh, my name's Rob McCoy. I am a part of TP USA Faith. I uh, had the privilege to become dear friends with Charlie Kirk, and we were talking, and I just said, you know, one of the most important things if America is going to change direction, is that the church has to wake up to its, to its responsibility of the public square. And a lot of you are wondering what that is, and if you are, I'm so glad you're here, because you're going to learn. And the fact that you came and you're still not sure about it, God bless you, you're the ones we want here. The others that know a lot about it, we're happy you're here. But give the others a seat, maybe you'll have to, no, I'm kidding. You see, the public square is the word ecclesia, which is, we think it's translated church, but it's actually public square, city hall. Aristotle translated it hundreds of years before Jesus ever invoked it in Matthew. He said, Upon this rock I will build my ecclesia, or my ecclesia, and the gates of hell will not prevail. Gates and slave. Gates and slave. It's said that the law is the wise restraints that make men free. How is that? From the moral law comes civil law. Why is it that God commands us that the law will not depart from us, and we're to memorize, uh, memorize it and, and, and to meditate on it. Do you know the moral law? One God, no idols, don't take the name of the Lord your God in vain, honor the Sabbath day, honor your mother and father, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't bear false witness. Don't covet. Do you know that? The Bible commands you to and to your children. Your children's children. Because from that moral law comes every decision we make. And you say the church shouldn't be in politics. Politics is the highest form of community. You've got to make rules to live. And how do we get along? And who's going to decide that? And you think the church doesn't have a role in that? When we have been given the Decalogue? The first five is our relationship with Him and our accountability to Him and our care for one another. And somehow we're not supposed to participate in the ecclesia with the gift God's given us. Those things that will set us free. The law doesn't save. I get it. Don't think I'm here to be a legalist. But it does say in Galatians 3.24 that the law is a, a, a tutor, a school teacher to point us to Christ until faith comes. I went through all ten. I didn't hear you all reciting them. You see, that moral law points people to Christ because they realize, I have failed to keep that. And that's what leads them to the Lord who is a God of mercy. We're saved by grace through faith. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But that doesn't mean we abandon the law. The law is what sets folks free because it's, it's this idea to say, look, we're binding, that's evil, and avoid that. And when you fail, you're not saved by it, but it points you to the one who can save you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. He is the perfection of that. He's the only one who's ever fulfilled it. I share all this with you because the church abandoned the law. They walked away from the public square. We said, no, you're saved by grace through faith. It's a gift of God. The law's only there to show you can't keep it. That's all. No, it's not. Far more involved. I don't do politics. Politics is dirty. What a stupid excuse. The church is dirty and you're still participating in it. Your life is dirty and you're still trying to make it better. If God didn't want us to be in politics, He would have never invented marriage. 
And you're saying, well, I'm tired of voting for the lesser of two evils. Unless Jesus is running for office, you're always voting for the lesser of two evils. Figure it out. But you're here. And I want you to know this is one of the greatest movements in church history in modern times because it is transforming this nation and awakening to the church to its responsibility to point people to Jesus. It's fascinating to me that it came out of a secular 501c3. And it was a conversation with a young man that a lot of the people in the churches of America had dismissed because he was too political. I have come to adore and love Charlie Kirk. He loves Jesus with all, with all his heart, soul, strength, and mind. I've been with him in the most trying of circumstances over a course of many days and exhaustion. And I tell you what, he never fails to read his Bible, spend time in prayer, and to love his family. He is one of the finest, most honest men I've ever met. And he never thought the church was going to support what he did and then came to realize the church has been waiting to support what he does. And we've all been here, and I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for doing that. Clap for yourselves, will you? <laughs> Through the course of this event, you're going to hear testimonies of folks who've been blessed by TPUSA faith. I want you to see what an impact you all have had on this country. In addition, there's sponsors who have helped out. We have one tomorrow night showing a film called Into the Light. You're going to want to see that. And you're going to hear about another film, too, that was... Letters to the American Church with our good friend Eric Metaxas. Folks, we're all in this together. Everybody carry a corner of the stretcher. You're going to hear more about that.